Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. How are you? I believe you guys are doing fine. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. We can hear you okay. very well. Okay, it's uh, almost time. I I think we can uh, wait for it one or two minutes because some people are staying, still joining. Is it all right if we wait for a couple of minutes? Okay. okay let's see for uh, just a minute or so. Okay, I believe we can start now. So once again, thank you everyone for joining today, for participating. So today we have Mr. Imon with us. We, we, he is one of our um, expert engineer who is working in this QTB project and with Kubernetes for quite a long time now. So I'll do and continue. The Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, hi, I'm Habibur Rahman Iman, software engineer at ASCII. So today I will demonstrate how to run a production grid uh, process first on Kubernetes. So let's share my screen first. So yeah, uh, you can ask me any question if you have uh, in this link, uh, uh, the, the above link here. Uh, so let's start now. So. Here is my table of contents, uh, like uh, uh, what makes a data, uh, database production grid uh, in Kubernetes, uh, then uh, uh, what actually a QDB managed process offers us, uh, then I will show you uh, some features from our uh, Kubernetes operator, uh, so QDB operator, like uh, deploying, uh, we, are, we are going to deploy a TLS secured process uh, uh, cluster, then we are going to upgrade our version, uh, then we are going to reconfigure our, uh, we are going to use our custom config, then we're going to uh, take backup and restore the backup from Google Cloud back, uh, Google, Google Cloud bucket. And then if I will answer any question you guys have. So uh, let's start. So the first question is what makes a database production good? Uh, to make a DB production good, we need uh, some features like uh, uh, backup and restore to handle any unexpected uh, disaster situation. Then in case if we need to add or remove a uh, node into our cluster, then we can use it uh, uh, by horizontal, uh, we can do it by horizontal scaling. Then uh, if in case if we need to upgrade our resource, like uh, we need to increase or decrease our uh, CPU or memory, then we can also do it uh, by particle scaling. Uh, then in case of latest, uh, in case of if we need to upgrade to our later, uh, in case we are using the old version, then we need to upgrade the latest version. Then we can also do that with version upgrading. Uh, then, uh, in case of uh, volume shortage, we can expand our volume. Then we need to uh, ensure that we have a security server with TLS. So, uh, let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what Postgres offers. Uh, QT managed Postgres offers us. So here are the features actually that support uh, you know, that have support in our QT operators. Like uh, we support clustering. In clustering, uh, from in uh, like there are three nodes. Then one node is going to be the primary, and the uh, other is going to be the standby of this primary, and they are going to sync with the data of the primary. So and we also support a uh, standby mode for both hot and ROM mode. Then uh, we also support the automatic failover. Uh, like in case if uh, any of your, uh, sorry, uh, the primary is going down for a certain moment or certain time, time of period, period of time, then one of the standby is going to take the primary role. 
uh, from the uh, old primary. Then uh, we have also support for streaming replication, then server uh, secured with TLS, like add, remove, update, rotate. We can also all, all do, the, do that all kind of uh, thing in our QT operator, uh, which is supported in enterprise version. Yeah, uh, then we have the version upgrade, like uh, you are using the old version, then uh, in, in the meantime, uh, the new, new version is releasing, then you can, all, uh, you can uh, update, uh, upgrade to the new version easily. Then we have also support for vertical scaling, then horizontal scaling, also the volume expansion part. And then we can also use uh, add custom configuration, on, then we can add it or update it or remove it in case you need it. Uh, then you also have the support for uh, backup, uh, backup our uh, database frequent uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a frequent time. Like uh, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, continuously be backing our data. We, for this, we are go going to use Stash. Like uh, uh, it is also a product or a product of F code. And then we can also restore our data from the backup. Uh, and uh, we have also support for the other distribution like time is still living. So, uh, so let, uh, let's try start our demo first. So uh, now I'm going to share my uh, terminal here. So let's take a look at the orchestration first uh, that I have uh, uh, pre-installed file here. So I have the kubectl version. Uh, you can see that my server version is 1.21 has the update, updated one. Then I, we are using client cluster to as, a, as our Kubernetes engine. So you can also see the version here. It is 0.11.1. So uh, we have uh, a pre-installed chart manager, which is actually are using, going to use for TLS uh, secure server. Uh, then we have also installed uh, the Stash Enterprise to backup and restore data. And the kubedb operators for like uh, for two uh, for the kubedb clusters. So let's uh, uh, now let's create a cl uh, cluster with minimal YML file. Like uh, let's show the YML first. So uh, here is the demo piece YML which I am going to uh, apply now. So here you can see that the version is eleven point one one. Then the replicant count is three. Uh, one, uh, from one of uh, three of them, one is going to be the primary end, and the other is, other two is going to be the uh, uh, standby. They are now standby modules are hot. Then we are using client auth mode like Scrum, which is actually uh, more, uh, more secure than MD5. So yeah, we are using uh, Scrum for cluster authentication mode. Then we have some TLS uh, spec like uh, uh, this is actually issuer reference. So with this issuer, we are going to uh, uh, create our server certificate and client certificate and, if, if, and in case of other certificate we need. Then, yeah, so firstly we need to uh, create this post case here issuer. So let's uh, uh, create the issuer post case issuer first. So here is the issuer YML that you are going to deploy for Postgres to create the Postgres issuer. So you can see that we have a reference in here, the secret name. So first we need to create the secret uh, Postgres here. Uh, this secret actually holds the uh, client certificate, sorry, sorry, the CA certificates and the CA key of our issuers. So let's first create the secret, command uh, secret here. So uh, CTL, sorry. So yeah, let's just create uh, the Postgres uh, CA secret here. You can see that we have already created Postgres CA, so we don't need to create again. So let's just apply the issue or email first. So we have created the issuer. So let's get the issuer first. Uh, issuer. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, you can see that the Postgres issue is ready. So we can use this to create our server certificate, client certificate. So let's just deploy the demo page UIML now. So uh, you can see that it has been created. Let's watch the Postgres uh, that you have created uh, here. So you can see that it is in provision state. It is going to uh, deploy three ports. So let's watch the ports here. So you can see that uh, 
two pairs have two parts have been already in running state and one is going to running so uh, yeah three port is running now so let's just wait for the stores to be ready so that we can connect to our database properly so let's wait for a minute to become the stores uh, provisioning to ready uh we can uh, we can see that the status ready now so let's first uh, get the resources that uh, postgres uh, our postgres instance created uh, here so yeah you can see that the three pod is running who is actually created by the full set here and there are three services like uh, demo pg which one is actually used by the uh, primary the primary is going to uh, the, where we, we are uh, we are using this service to connect to the primary then uh, the demo pg standby is going to uh, is, is for the uh, is, is pointing to the uh, standby and the demo pg ports are uh, pointing to the is for the internal communication between the ports and you can also see that uh, here we have uh, created a binding demo pg uh, this one is actually for connecting the database. Uh, uh, this is actually holding the connection uh, connection uh, information about the database. So, yeah, that's all. And uh, so let's now insert some dummy data into our Postgres cluster for this season. I am going to exit in any of our uh, uh, one of our pod. So let's first find out who is pod is actually primary here. So we need to check the logs for this region. So let's just uh, check the log here, demo pg zero. Uh, so you can see that uh, this uh, pod is uh, in, in the log of this pod, the database system is ready to accept connections. So this pod is actually primary here. And if you see the other pod logs like demo pg one, then yeah, you can see that uh, this uh, pod is actually streaming uh, is in standby mode and uh, streaming from uh, streaming the wall. So this one is actually the standby, and you can also see the demo pg two here. Then this one is also a standby here. So demo pg one and demo pg two is standby of the demo pg zero pod, and they are syncing their data with the demo pg zero. So let's just exit into demo pg uh, zero here. So we have exit into demo pg zero here. Then we can connect to our data like PSQL. Then we are going to create a test TV. Uh, so create test TV uh, database. So you create a database called test TV. Let's just list the database here. So you can see that in our list of database, the test TV is existing now. So let's just connect to the test TV first. So here we have connected uh, to our test TV. Now just uh, insert a simple uh, sample table just uh, to ensure that we are writing properly. So uh, let's create a table for name company which has two uh, column like name and role. So yeah, we have created our table. Then uh, let's insert a row here. So yeah, we are inserting into a company like name is Imon and role is software engineer. So yeah, uh, if you just uh, review the changes here, you can see that. Uh, we have inserted the row properly. Now, uh, let's exit from here. And you can see that our TV version is here 11.11. Uh, 11. So uh, now we know that the latest version uh, is now 13.2. So if uh, anyone wants to update their uh, database to 13.2, so you can also do that by uh, QTV. So let's, uh, we are going to, uh, use the postcase of secret for this. So let's take a look at our upgrade YML first. So yeah, uh, you can see here the upgrade YML here, and then uh, the kind is postcase of secret, and the type is here upgrade. Uh, then we need two things here to upgrade uh, our database, like the database name. What is demo PG here? You can see that the name is here demo PG. So yeah, and the targeted version like thirteen point two. In which version we are going to update. So let's just apply this one. So I am just applying demo PG YML. So yeah. Sorry, uh, the upgrade one. So you can see that we have it has been created. So let's watch the obstacles here. So you can see the status here is progressing. So let's just wait for me to become it uh, become it's uh, successful. 
So here, uh, the upgrade operation is uh, doing by the QDB enterprise and it is uh, doing really smartly. Like uh, by smartly, I mean that it will upgrade one port at a time and it will uh, we'll wait for uh, it to join the cluster before moving to the next one. So here it will uh, initially uh, restart the master first. So you can see that demo PG0 was master. So it was restarting first. Then it's going to restart the demo PG1, then demo PG2, one by one. So I'll just list, wait for the, uh, the status to be uh, successful here. So in the meantime, let's check the uh, version we have uh, available here. So let's get the post case versions. So you can see that uh, we have the support for 10.16, 11.1, 12.6, 13.2, 9.6.21, and we have also support for time scaling distribution. So, and we have uh, support uh, for two kind of images, like uh, for Alpine images and for the Debian images. Uh, yeah, for the Debian images. So actually, we have we are supporting these two kind of images for like uh, sometimes the user needs to customize their user ID or group ID. Uh, because there are kind of security context where, where, where we restrict the user ID and group ID in a range. Like in OpenShift, we can see that uh, that they have some restriction for the user ID and group ID. So yeah, uh, for this reason, we have to support this version uh, like Debian. In Debian, you can upgrade, you can uh, customize your user ID and group ID. So you can see that it is still in uh, the off sequence is still in progressing uh, state, but the demo PG zero has been in running step one. That means it uh, has restarted and it's now time for the demo PG one to restart. So it is in terminal state now. So just let's wait for a minute to terminate and restart this uh, demo PG one. Uh, in the meantime, we can check if the uh, demo PG zeros uh, uh, version has been upgraded or not. So let's just inject into uh, demo PG zero port and see the post case version first. Sorry, my bad. My bad. Yeah, you can see that the version is yeah thirteen point two. So that's great. Uh, now we need to think of if uh, we have loosed our data that we have been created for earlier. So let's just check that if we have loosed our data or not. So we have created a database uh, like test TV. So first list the database here. So you can see that uh, here the, the test TV is existing. So yeah, we don't have any data source here, so don't need to. You don't need to worry into very body, body about that. So you can also see that the, our uh, obstacles has been successful finally. Uh, so yeah, that's great. Uh, uh, now let's uh, proceed further. Like uh, when we had started our demo, we said that we are going to deploy production gear cluster. So. You can ask if someone initially start to post this with our default config that we are kindly providing. Then after some periods of time, they realize that they need to update, update some configuration for better performance. Like, uh, uh, like uh, they have some max connection initially 100, then they realize they need to, it to increase to 200 or something like that. Then also can do, the, do this with our QD operator. So let's first check if uh, what uh, it is the, uh, current value of our uh, max connection. So you can see that the max connection value is here 100. Uh, yeah, 100. So we are planning uh, to upgrade this one to 200. And we are also, uh, we are going to upgrade the shared the first volume, uh, shared the first value, like first list, look at it first, shared. So you can see that the shared value is here 256, which is the default value here. So we are going to upgrade this one to 300 MB. So let's just proceed further. We're going to exit and to come here. Then 
uh, we are going to use another postgres of request to uh, reconfigure our uh, configuration so let's first take a look at our yml uh, you can uh, see this yml here uh, here uh, we have kind of postgres of request and the type is here reconfigure which one was earlier in upgrade and the database reference the demo pg and the configuration, which is actually a, a max connection to 200 and shared browser to 300 so MB. So yeah, let's just uh, apply this one. See, apply. Let's just uh, deploy this one. So you can see that it has been created uh, properly. So let's just wait for me to uh, become successful. It will take some time as we all need to restart all these three ports. So let's just wait for me. You can see that the status here is changed to not ready. So what is meaning by not ready? Not ready means that we can't use the database uh, when the database is in not ready state. So we can't connect to it. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it is uh, uh, not ready now. Uh, it will be uh, soon. It will be critical or something ready like that. When it is critical, we can say that uh, okay. Uh, go, uh, from three ports, there is one of one of the, one of the port is uh, not running, but the master is running. So we can uh, write uh, read write. Uh, we can do read write, uh, read write operation in our database. Uh, but uh, uh, the database is not re in ready state. But in ready state means that all the, all the ports are in ready and here this just is just a cell. So yeah, let's just wait for a minute to uh, become this just really not uh, ready and uh, it's just to, uh, the obstacles is just so successful. Uh, you can see that the issue was critical here, then it's ready now. So ready means that all three ports are running. But uh, uh, these two ports need to restart also. So let's just wait for a minute. You can see that the state is critical now, which means that uh, the main port, the primary port is now running, but the other uh, one of the other ports are not in ready state. So yeah, uh, yeah one of the ports are not uh, actually connecting to the uh, primary properly. So this is one is actually uh, the state is critical here. So as we have already upgraded the demo PC zero, so let's check into the uh, demo PC zero if the value has been updated or not. So let's exit into demo PG. Then still. So the initially value was uh, the max connection value was 100. Let's now check the value of max connection in demo PG zero here. So show max connections. Uh, you can see that the value here is 200, which has updated properly. So, and we also need to check the show uh, buffered values. Like show shared buffers. Ah, you can see that the value is 300 in the here. So that's great. Now just let's uh, wait for another one or two minutes to uh, ready this to force actually this one is running now then it's the demo pc to turn here let's check the demo pc one's value uh, so let's take that into demo pc one then see You can also see that the replica max connection value has been upgraded to 200. So yeah. <laughs> now the demo PG2 is in terminating state. So let's just wait for a moment again. And the uh, status is still progressing. And you can also see the uh, DB status is here is critical. This is as expecting.
Mm, the body is body initializing now. Democracy 2. It is in running state. Let's wait for that pod uh, uh, to join our cluster. So. It will take some time to join the cluster. Now you can see that uh, the reconfigure of sequence has been successful properly. So, but it's still the still is critical here, so it is going to change soon. So you can see that the state is ready here. Oh, that's great. So. Now we need to ensure that in any kind of uh, disaster, disaster season, we don't lose our data. Like we have always taken our backup or we, are, we can always get back our data. So for this reason, we need to backup our uh, DB continuously. And then uh, in case of any disaster, we can just uh, get back our data with the restore process. So to take backup, we are going to use the stash, uh, which is actually by F score. Uh, we'll take the backup to our cluster on the Google Cloud bucket. So uh, first uh, uh, check uh, the, for, the uh, for taking the backup in our Google Cloud bucket, we need to create a Google Cloud service account credential so that we can uh, access into Google Cloud. So first list uh, uh, just uh, uh, I think it's going to be console. So yeah. Okay. Uh, console dot cloud dot google dot com. Sorry, I'm a private console dot cloud dot uh, com. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we can just uh, look into our cloud storage. Then we're going to store our data in demo page zero. So let's uh, and the uh, demo page repository. Uh, you know, this one is actually a bucket name demo page zero, and this demo, demo is our repository name. So there is already a backup existing. So let's just read this one. So let's just wait for a minute to delete the uh, data. Uh, Now you can see that the demo repository is empty now. So let's just start with our backup. So for backup, we are go going to use our Stash Enterprise here. So for this reason, we need to create a backup configuration, which is going to uh, uh, take backup in every five minutes. So uh, you can see that the here is the schedule here is the five minutes. So the backup is going to be taking every five uh, minutes. Then the repository, the repository name actually the uh, uh, our Google Cloud bucket name. Uh, so, the, so, so in this repository, we are going to store uh, store the information uh, uh, re regarding our Google Cloud bucket and the target uh, target DB. Here uh, we can see that the app binding we have provided here is the demo PG uh, demo PG which which we have been created when the we have uh, created our cluster with post uh, operator. <laughs> So we have provided the reference here as the app binding uh, that with this information, uh, Stash is going to connect with our Kubernetes cluster, uh, Postgres cluster here. So for this uh, initially we need to create the repository first. So let's just create the repository first. So here is the repository YML that we are going to create. Uh, to create this repository, here we have, uh, see, uh, you can see that we have uh, we have the name, bucket name here, demo PG, and the prefix demo, which is the repository name, and the storage secret name, which is GCC secret. So we need to first create this GCC secret so we can, uh, where we, the credential will be stored. So let's first create the secret here. So 
So uh, you can you can see that we have already created the GCC secret here, so we don't need to create again. So let's just uh, apply the sample repo here, the repository actually. So the sample repo, you can see that we have created it. Uh, let's just create one this one. Yeah, you can see that we have created a Postgres repo. When we get that, we have get it properly. So now we need to uh, uh, create the backup configuration. So with backup configuration, the schedule is like five minutes. So we need to wait for five minutes to uh, take the backup. And uh, actually, this is the continuous process with the, with the, in every five minutes, uh, the uh, the station is going to take a backup for the uh, database demo PG. So, but we can also manually trigger the uh, invoke this uh, this uh, backup. Uh, so, for this reason, we need to create a backup session. Here is the uh, YML of our backup session. You can see that we have just invoked our backup configuration, PG backup config, which is actually the name of our uh, backup config. So, yeah, let's first uh, deploy this backup configuration. Then uh, we can just uh, apply the backup session to uh, uh, invoke our uh, backup configuration immediately. So let's just start. Uh, KC apply backup config. So you can see that we have created our backup. Now we are going to uh, create a session, backup session, so that we can immediately take the backup. So you can see that we have uh, created the backup session and you can also see that we have we have a running cron job here. So, Let's just uh, watch the backup here. You can see that it is in running phase. So let's just wait to it's, uh, to be succeeded. You can see that the backup has been succeeded. So let's now we don't need any any other backup. So we are just going to post the backup configuration here. So let's just post the backup configuration. So for patch, uh, for uh, posing our backup uh, configuration, we are just passing the backup configuration and the spec, and we are going to uh, set the value post to true. So let's just pass this one. You can see that in spec, we are going to uh, po uh, we, are, we have set the value post to true. So the backup condition is not going to provoke any backup sessions now. So uh, now we are going to restore our data from the OPG uh, to a new new fresh cluster. So fresh cluster. So let's first uh, uh, delete the demo PG. So let's start with uh, deleting the demo PG. Uh, now, oops, there is some error uh, that we can terminate this one. Actually, this one is expected. Uh, like uh, in our YML, we have a section called termination policy and we have set it to do not terminate. Uh, this one is actually an extra layer of uh, protection so that you can't delete your database accidentally. So we need to first upgrade the termination policy to wipe out so that we can delete all resources properly. So let's just uh, upgrade the termination policy. So we're going to patch the termination policy for demo PG. Here you can see that we have passed the uh, demo PG uh, uh, demo PG uh, Postgres clusters uh, termination policies to wipe out. So just let's test this one. Okay. So let's try again. Ah, this time you can probably delete. So you can see that our uh, ports are terminating now. Let's just uh, wait for the cluster to remove their, all of its resources. Mm. There is still in time waiting instead. Uh, ah, the termination, it is still time waiting the demo is zero. So let's just wait for a minute. Ah. We have uh, properly uh, uh, clean up our resources. So let's just create another <coughs> Postgres cluster. So we are going to use another uh, YML here. So uh, you can see that uh, here the name uh, DB cluster name is Digital PG, which is a new cluster. And uh, then the version here is 13.2. Uh, 
uh, and the other specs are same as uh, the demo PG uh, cluster. So let's just uh, deploy this one. So it has been created. Let's just wait for it to uh, be the stress to be ready. It is now in provision instead. So yeah, the ports are creating now. And now to restore our data, we are going to create a backup session here. Restore, sorry, restore session here. So first, let's take a look. Uh, take a look at our restore session YML. So yeah, here is our restore session YML here. So you can see that uh, the name is here postcase uh, postcase in it, and then namespace is demo. And the repository name actually from which repository they are going to restore their data, which they have created earlier, uh, and the reference of the app binding, the app binding name actually the restore piece is app binding name, which has been created by our QT uh, operator for when we have created the uh, restore PG, uh, cluster. So yeah. Let's just uh, deploy this one. So let's prepare a wash session for these two sessions. And you can see that there is no register session currently running. So let's just apply the register now. Mm, let's just create this one. You can see that the restore physics is now in data storing, data restoring. So uh, when we are going to uh, restore data from uh, stash, it's going to be restoring. Then you can see that the state is ready now. So we can see that finally the phase is succeeded. So yeah, we have properly, I think we have properly stored our data. Let's check it now. Let's just exit into, uh, sorry, my bad. Exit into the board. Uh, uh, let's do uh, We need to actually provide the namespace here. So yeah, you can see that we have uh, exiting the port. Let's just, uh, now let's just list the DB here. So in our DB list, you can see that the test DB actually now exists, which was actually created in our demo PGA cluster. So let's just connect to the DB. We are now connected to test DB and then you can just, uh, select all four tables and then we can see that we are we have the dummy data here with that we have created with our demo uh, so let's get let's now just go from here so let's just click this one so in the start of our demo, we have said that QD minus postcast clusters uh, is going to support automated failure for other planning. So what do I mean by automated failure? Suppose if the current primary is somehow down or unreachable, then from the Eastern voice one, uh, one need to be become the primary. Uh, so QD minus uh, postcast cluster uh, is automatically doing this for us. Let's first check the, let's just simulate this, uh, this problem here. Like we are going to uh, delete the pri primary here and let's check if uh, one of others standby node is going to convert into new primary. So let's just check this one. So first just check the logs of all the restore PGA uh, uh, ports here. So you can see that uh, the demo PG zero is actually the new primary cause uh, that are, uh, here the, this is this one is ready to accept connections. So you can say that this one is actually right, uh, uh, is, is the primary here. And uh, you can see the other ports log also. So you can see that this port is actually now uh, another standby. Uh, and let's just check the log of this to PG two here. So you can see that this port is now the another uh, another standby here. 
this one is actually standby so let's just delete the primary port and see if any of these two port is going to be primary or not so let's just delete the port restore pg so you can see that we have deleted and you can see that from this log you can understand that yeah you can see that immediately uh, demo pg uh, and this port is demo pg uh, restore pg2 has been uh, converted into new primary and the old uh, standby is going to sync with the new primary so yeah now our main concern is uh, when the uh, Restore PG zero is coming back to our cluster. Is it kind of going to join as a standby or is it going to join as a new primary? So if it's going to join as a new primary, then we are going to have some problem. Like we are going to have the speed burden problem. So let's just check if uh, yeah, with which uh, in which rows this uh, actually this uh, restore PG comes out. Restore PG zero post comes out. So let's just check the log. Uh, let's see log. You can see that the status is still in critical state. So again, see that the status is ready now. So let's just check the log here. Yeah, that's great. You can see that uh, the standby is now, uh, sorry, the demo PG, uh, sorry, restore PG0 is now become, become a new uh, standby, which is actually syncing their data with the new primary. Yeah. So you can see that we have uh, automated failover. We have we have the automated failover uh, functionality here. So that's all from my side. Uh, thank you, everyone. That's all for today's demo. Uh, then, if you have you guys have any question, you can ask here. Uh, so uh, I, I had one question. Um, I see you deleted the pod, um, but if the pod uh, is failing its health check, does that also trigger a automatic failover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will also trigger the failover, uh, and uh, the, then uh, yeah, this will also trigger the failover. Uh, okay. Uh, so in this demo, we didn't kind of show the uh, vertical and horizontal scaling for time reasons, but uh, those operations are also supported through this obstacle mechanism. Uh, sorry, somebody was going to ask a question. Let's go. Ahead. Uh, anybody else have any question? I have a question. <clears throat> Can I ask? Yeah. Okay, I found three pod. So three pod means uh, three replica with database or only three replica process, post-GRE process? Uh, those are three replicas with data. So they have data. a so, so master node is responsible for all data insertion and operation. And other two is just replica means slave, right? Yes, they, those are the standby replicas, yes. Is that master master or master slave? It's a master slave application. Okay, that means uh, one transaction happening in master, um, just it commit the master and just sync to with the save slave pod, right? Yes, using the streaming replication mechanism in Postgres, yes. Okay, I have also two questions, can I? Sure. Okay, one question is, um, uh, when I found that uh, in five minutes you were copying uh, for backup, so is that uh, is that in, uh, do you ensure that is that uh, from slave or or master or does it hamper the live production uh, operation? So currently uh, it uses the app binding. Uh, so if you look at the app binding, actually it has a reference to the service. From where it can read the data, the Kubernetes service and the credential Kubernetes secret. Uh, so uh, the demo that we showed today, it was using the app binding that was automatically created, and, and that one was for the uh, always points to the primary pod. Uh, and we use PG dump to take that full backup. Uh, so if you are concerned that like you know I don't want to use the primary instance, but I want to take backup from the replicas. Then you okay. can uh, create a, a binding that will point to the 
the replica service. If you look at the number of services that we automatically create, um, yeah. So yeah, okay. that, that, that means uh, uh, I mean uh, data backup don't hamper live operation, right? No, it doesn't. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 But one more question. You take backup from the primary instance, but you can also. Yeah. Yeah. Got. Got. Got the point. One more question. Uh, I found all of your uh, example in GCP, Google Cloud, or AWS. So, do you support local premise? Yes. Yeah, so you can use on-prem uh, data, like you know, cluster deployments. So oh. uh, you can use. Uh, you know, we we depend on Kubernetes to provide these storage layers. So you can use any. Like you know things like Ceph, Rook, or NetApp, or you know v, v Square, uh, sorry vSphere, vSense, any kind of uh, storage solution that works, uh, you know, has the supports the Kubernetes PVC concept, uh, you will be able to use locally, including local storage. Okay, yeah. got it, uh, got it. I mean, and one more thing, uh, so cluster also can point in the, uh, I mean, uh, network storage also, right? I mean, yeah, yes. so you can use NFS or some other type of network storage, yes. Okay, thank you. I just want to know about uh, your production or uh, I mean uh, enterprise edition pricing. So uh, can you uh, talk uh, some yeah. other channel for this? Yeah, so you can reach out to us. Uh, you can just write to us at uh, support at appscore.com. Okay, okay, okay. Thank, got it. thank you. Yeah, well, we, we can yeah got it. Thank you so much. Yeah, but I mean, just to give you some clarity, so it is uh, typically priced on uh, the sort of the you know the, your size of your deployment. So how many databases you have and how much the resource, like the CPU and memory assigned to those instances, kind of based on that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Got it. Thank you. So, uh, so, so I I just had one one uh, well another question which is. Um, how do you uh, determine which one of your databases is the read write master uh, versus the replicas? Um, and can you determine that from a uh, uh, kubectl command? Uh, yes. So, uh, I, I mean, one way to know that which one of the pods right now is primary or master is uh, you, uh, you can look at the log. For that, that's kind of a little tricky because you have to look at all the three pods and see which one is primary. The e, another easy solution is to actually look at the service, which has the same name as the Postgres custom resource. So in this case, this is the restore-pg and look at the endpoint. So that will point to the pod IP, which is the current master. So, uh, and the, so uh, yeah, so uh, Iman, if you can show us that, Uh, and dash and demo then say restore dash pg get get in points this is the kube cuddle get service right yeah yeah so get service and so the pod that has that ip address 10.244.0.45 that's the current uh, uh primary yeah Uh, Tomal bhai, uh, I have another question. Can I ask? Yeah, sure. I mean, if there yeah, is, I, I, we can, we can okay. go, go back. Yeah, I, I am from Bangladesh, uh, so sure. and, and from your university. So uh, we are working a payment system. So we need a master master replica because we, our slave is always behind five minutes, two minutes, three minutes. So, so yeah. uh, and we are using still MySQL. So we are planning to such like a solution. So do you have a master master replica, I mean, uh, at Postgre solution? Um, I mean, when a transaction yeah. happened, it will sync both master, then reply the application layer, right? Have yeah, you so, got my point? Yeah, so, so Postgre SQL has a concept called uh, synchronous replication. So today we just showed you the asynchronous replications where you know the transaction gets uh, saved in the primary instance and then it switches to the uh, you know, basically the transaction complete right? as long as it has a quorum. Uh, so you, you can, if you switch to the synchronous mode, then you will have uh, that that safety. But I don't believe Postgres has a multi-master synchro uh, replication mechanism. It's more like a, you have to turn on the synchronous. So it will ensure that at least a quorum, majority of the replicas has the transaction 
and then uh, it re replies back. Um, and then uh, there is, a, a, and if you are talking about MySQL, so for MySQL, you will be able to use the multi-master mode. Uh, our QDB operator supports the MySQL group replication mode, and the group replication mode supports multi-master um, uh, uh, transactions. So you can write to any master, and, yes. and it will also make sure that uh, uh, you know the any write you do is 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 not going to lose. You are not going to lose that data if you know there is a failover. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. I think we can have a uh, later more discussion on it. Sure. I just just email us. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, so sorry, David. I, I I'm not really sure that you have we had answered your question, but if you have any more, feel free to. Um, no, uh, that, that, that answers my question, um, get endpoints. Okay, thank you. So in this demo, we also didn't really show, a, we have a kubectl plugin, uh, still a little bit early stage. I mean, so we are kind of working uh, in that plugin, you know, we're kind of trying to make it easy. Like you don't have to go to this three commands, right? You'll be able to just say, you know, kubectl, uh, you know, kubedb connect to the database name and dash and namespace. And it will kind of take you to that or kind of show you the information. So some of the stuff that's like right now, you need to kind of do a couple of kubectl commands or two three commands, you can you'll be able to do it with the one sort of uh, command there. Uh, so we have, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so we, we see that uh, there's a question about, uh, is there a webinar, sorry, the uh, Git repo that aligns with, aligns with the webinar. Uh, so, yeah, so, uh, you know, we will share this uh, recording uh, on our YouTube channel. I mean, we, we can reply back to everybody who signed up. And, and the YAML files that are used in this demo are also shared on our uh, GitHub organization. Uh, usually there's a repo called, uh, uh, kubedb slash project and in uh, uh, github.com slash kubedb slash project and that one has a uh, demo folder and we uh, uh, save and upload those uh, yamls there so it will be also pointed in our uh, video recording like in the description section in the youtube so you'll be able to get that too um, anybody else have any question Okay, I see, yeah. Yeah, I've shared the uh, link in the uh, Zoom chat. Yeah, so the other thing that we kind of haven't really mentioned much in this demo or had a chance to show is that uh, because QDB uses uh, Docker images, um, you are able to, you know, install any of the uh, Postgres plugins. So uh, we use the official uh, Docker images for Postgres and the timescale DVD images. Uh, but uh, there is a mechanism, uh, you know, it's actually documented on our website also. Uh, you can you can build your own custom image. So basically, you know, take the official image and pre bundle any image uh, plugins you need. Like uh, we have seen people uh, want to use uh, PostGIS or I believe there is another one on the PG squeeze to kind of clean up old data, things like that. So any plugin that, uh, you know, just, uh, you, you can just uh, build a Docker image and use with QDB. So rest all the functionality of QDB will work the operator uh, with your custom image. So so it is it is done through the uh, Postgres version catalog uh, CRD. Uh, so that's uh, it's all. Okay, so, uh, I guess if there's no other question, then I, I think, uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining. Uh, you can always email us at uh, uh, support at appscode.com. Uh, we you know, we'll, we'll, we'll reply back to you if you have any question about this or about our product or any other things. Uh, okay, so thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Uh, thank you everyone.